I can easily understand how sympathetic onlookers across the Atlantic or anxious friends in the yet unravaged countries of Europe who cannot measure our resources or our resolve may have feared for our survival when they saw so many states and kingdoms torn to pieces in a few weeks or even days by the monstrous force of the Nazi war machine. But Hitler has not yet been withstood by a great nation with a willpower the equal of his own. Many of these countries have been poisoned by intrigue before they were struck down by violence. They have been rotted from within before they were smitten from without. How else can you explain what has happened to France, to the French army, to the French people, to the leaders of the French people? But here, in our island, we are in good health and in good heart. We have seen how Hitler prepared in scientific detail the plans for destroying the neighbor countries of Germany. He had his plans for Poland and his plans for Norway. He had his plans for Denmark. He had his plans all worked out for the doom of the peaceful, trustful Dutch and, of course, for the Belgians. We have seen how the French were undermined and overthrown. We may therefore be sure that there is a plan, perhaps built up over years, for destroying Great Britain, which, after all, has the honor to be his main and foremost enemy. All I can say is that any plan for invading Britain, which Hitler made two months ago, uh, must have had to be entirely recast in order to meet our new position. Two months ago, nay, one month ago, our first and main effort was to keep our best army in France. All our regular troops, all our output of munitions, and a very large part of our air force had to be sent to France and maintained in action there. But now we have it all at home. Never before in the last war or in this, have we had in this island an army comparable in quality, equipment, or numbers to that which stands here on guard tonight? We have a million and a half men in the British Army under arms tonight. And every week of June and July has seen their organization, their defenses, and their striking power advance by leaps and bounds. No praise is too high for the officers and men, high and civilians, who have made this immense transformation in so short a time. Behind these, soldiers of the regular army, uh, as a means of destruction for parachutists, airborne invaders, and any traitors that may be found in our midst, and I do not believe there are many, woe betide them, they will get short shrift. Behind the regular army, we have more than a million of the local defense volunteers, or as they are much better called, the Home Guard. These officers and men, a large proportion of whom have been through the last war, have the strongest desire to attack and come to close quarters with the enemy, wherever he may appear. Should the invader come to Britain, there will be no placid lying down of the people in submission before him, as we have seen, alas, in other countries. We shall defend every village, every town, and every city. The vast mass of London itself, fought street by street, could easily devour an entire hostile army. And we would rather see London laid in ruins and ashes than that it should be tamely and abjectly enslaved.